Jai Gor Pravananda. All glory is his symbol of Lord Jesus. All glory is his symbol of Lord Jesus. All glory is his symbol of Lord Jesus. All glory is to Shri Guru and Gauranga Shila Prabhupada. Okay. So, anyway, thank you for coming here. So many nice Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis have come. I feel honored to see you all. So, we'd we'll like to speak tonight about the coronavirus. <laughs> Indirectly. So I was thinking about that, that, uh, I was talking about the Russes. <laughs> All right, so I was thinking, thinking about the Russ, you know, the uh, taste of relationship, that's what a Russ means. Someone's phone keeps going off. Oh, they keep playing. Yeah. Oh, oh so they they don't have mobile phones yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. They just have iPads. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, of course, I think everybody here is acquainted with the uh, five direct rusts. You know, Shanti rust, Dasha rust, Lucky rust, Rakali rust, Mahuri rust. But uh, you may not be acquainted with the seven indirect rests. Things like adbuta, shock, or ghastliness, or fear, or humor, or chivalry. Uh, so I was thinking about this with the coronavirus. Sorry, right, so let's get back to mundane topics. So <laughs> that people actually enjoy being fearful. Enjoy being angry. I mean, of course, the enjoyment in this world is not really enjoyment. It just makes people forget how miserable they are. So, uh, because the most miserable thing actually is boredom. Of course, I know. Of course, the pain is boredom too. So, I was thinking about this in the spiritual world. You know, people are so fearful now. You know, they just like, if they see someone who they think comes from China. Like, <laughs> Even I was like that, I was in Delhi, and I saw some people coming from China, and I just ran to the other side of the airport. <laughs> <laughs> like I, so, but it's sort of an enjoyable feeling. It is, I mean, people go to amusement parks nowadays. Or not only nowadays, of course they don't go to amusement parks now because they're afraid of catching fires, <laughs> but, but they go to amusement parks and they go on all these rides that make them afraid. I remember going on that roller coaster, mm -hmm. what do you call them here? Yeah. Like roller, roller co no. coaster. They're probably just called coaster. Uh, <laughs> in Australia usually is short. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I like the coaster. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember going on that. One time in my life I went on it. And everyone was, especially the ladies. That was the worst part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fear was all right, but the ladies screaming was too much for me. <laughs> so going down. <laughs> and then people go on the next ride. You know, there's another one called the Centrifuge. Oh, yeah. You know about that. Mm -hmm. Where you just like get pressed against the wall with like five G's. That your skin is just like coming off on your face and everything. And uh, there was another one, the haunted house. Mm -hmm. Haunted house? Yeah. Where you get in this little cart, you ride around and a skeleton jumps out at you. Ah! And people are enjoying it this way. It's actually not enjoying it. But anyway, uh, because we are meant to enjoy rust. And I was thinking of this in relationship to Lord Ram's pastimes. Actually, my trip here, 
Uh, I've been reading the Ramayana. It's actually a nice way to pass time on, on a long plane trip. Mm-hmm. On a long plane trip, it's hard really to get into philosophy that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe studying the Bhagavad Gita, but after learning a few verses and preaching it to the person sitting next to you, <laughs> <laughs> he tells you to shut up. You know, so, uh, so, uh, so I'm reading the Ramayana and really seeing how much intense emotions are there in the Ramayana. I mean, really intense emotions. It's actually, you could say it's an adventure story, it's a romance story, but it's actually a story of Ras. Like Krishna is called Rasa Raj. Uh, and he's the actual uh, king of Ras. So when Krishna enjoys these different tastes, he enjoys them to an extreme degree. Like, for example, I mean, first part of the Ramayan, uh, the Yojikan, you have, uh, you have <coughs> Dasarath experiencing this intense separation from Ram. When Ram, I mean, an anger towards his wife. Nice guy, Katie. Mm-hmm. That's a nice story. I mean, it's just like, you can see the intense emotions are there. Like Mantra, she sort of like uh, stirs up the intense emotions in Kaikei, right? Mm-hmm. Kaikei at, at one time is very joyful, and the Mantra makes her completely like miserable and angry and envious by bad association. And then she she goes into the angry room in the palace. Every actually. In, these queens, they all had angry rooms in their palaces. Yeah. So those of you who are married should ask your husbands to get you an angry room. A <laughs> <laughs> room where you could be angry. Anyway, so she goes in, just to trick Dasara, she goes into her angry room. And she's like, pounding on, oops, sorry. I gotta be careful, because lately I've gotten really... One time I was giving class recently and I threw my glasses off. <laughs> so, yeah, due to my Italian blood. Anyway, so, <laughs> in Italy, Italy they speak with their hands, you know, like, like that. So, uh, so she's uh, lying on the floor, pounding on the floor, and Dasarat comes in and it, he says, what? What's the problem, my beloved? She starts crying more and more, and finally he says, whatever you want, I'll get you. And she says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the tears go away. Those are called crocodile tears, <laughs> where you cry to get something that you want. So I said, told her the tears go away, and she tells us, I want a problem uh, to be exiled to the Dundakaranga forest for 14 years, and I want my son Bart to be installed. And then poor Dasarath, he can't believe what he's heard. He just collapses. And then he gets back to normal, well, not normal consciousness, but he comes back to external consciousness. He says, what did I hear? And then he starts begging her intensely, intense emotions there, begging her intensely, you know, touching her feet and begging her anything to, you know, change your mind. She says, no. And finally, they call for Ram. Ram comes in, and Dasra can't say a word. He's completely, let's say, morose, depressed. We talk about clinical depression. Hmm. Clinical depression. So he's there like, so he can't say anything at all. And then Kai Kei says to him, says to Ram, you got to go to the forest for uh, 14 years, and Bart is going to be installed. And Ram, at this point, he doesn't show any emotions. He's just like, okay, whatever you say. And then, you know, so he, he at this point is like Shanta, you know, re- really peaceful. And it's amazing. And he even says to Kai Kei, that even if you, why did you have to bother my father? Even if you asked me to go, I would have done it. Just a little thing, you know. 
Plus, I'll have a good time in the forest. So then he goes to tell, first the person he tells is his mother, Hosalia. And his mother is upset, and then Ram starts to get really upset too, because he loves his mother so much. So you see, it's so many loving relationships that are there, intense loving relationships. And Krishna <coughs> and Ram, the same person, they're arranging all these things to bring out the intense emotions, not only of their devotees, but even of themselves. Because Ram is enjoying this. <coughs> you actually enjoy intense emotions, right? I mean, if it wasn't coronavirus, you'd have to invent something else to be upset about. <laughs> right? The stock market, or your grades in school. I mean, you have to think about something like Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm sure you have your politicians here. You should be upset about. There's something to be upset about. So. So anyway, so Ram is just like completely, he's practically crying with his mother, and crying his mother. And then Lakshman comes out with his anger. And Lakshman says, well, you see all these tense emotions. Lakshman says, let's just lock up the old fool, referring to his father. <laughs> the old man's become senile. You know, just control with that wicked woman. Just put him in jail. And I'll kill him even. Because Lakshman, it's really, I, I thought it was quite interesting. I love the Ramayana. I like Krishna too, but it's not that I'm changing the world. Sometimes you're in Fiji, and the devotees are asked the question all the time in Fiji. Because everyone in Fiji likes the Ramayana, right? Because we're always saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Krishna. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, somehow or other, right? I really like the mind. So, so anyway, so Lakshman, he's so angry, he says, he kill the old man, put him in jail. And he's ready to do that. And Ram says, no, he's your father, you've got to respect him. So here there's this conflict of devotions there. You know, he's your father, you've got to listen to Ram. I just want to choke the guy. <laughs> you know, because uh, Lakshman is so loyal to Ram. And the same, the same uh, yeah, uh, Satrugna is, is so loyal to Bart, too. So later on, you have Satrugna, he, is, he takes Mantra and practically kills her. You know the story? He drags her, drags, grabs the jewels off of her body throws her on the ground and starts thrashing her. And Bart has to stop him. So you got these super intense emotions. That's it. So anyway, so Lakshman is like that. Kosalya is like that. And then Sita, she's not upset with the whole thing. She just tells Ram, actually this was predicted when I was young. The astrologer said that when I was older, I'd have to go to the forest. And Ram says, no, you're staying here. And she threatens to kill herself. <coughs> if I have to stay here without you, I'll, I'll kill myself. You know, really intense stuff. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's so, it's so attractive. It's so exciting, the Ramaya. And I'm actually appreciating how reading is much better than seeing movies. <coughs> Why is that? Because when you see a movie, it's not really, you're not really involving your imagination that much. You actually, you know, you can't picture it in your mind because it's right in front of you. So it, it, it's just, it's not really dynamic. It's not really interactive. It's the, you know, you see the movie about Ram or whatever, you know, because I've watched the Ramayana and Mahabharat, always in a movie like that, but just reading about it, I picture Ram and then Ram goes to the forest, and Dasara wants to follow him, and all the citizens of Ayodhya want to follow Ram. And Kaikeya is really upset. How can you rule a, Bart rule a kingdom without any people? 
before me. <laughs> I mean, she was just used for the whole pastime. Anyway, so then, then to make a little story short, Mokram goes to the forest, and uh, the first place he goes to is Chitrakoot. And Chitrakoot is not that far away. Uh, it's really not that far away from the Yoja. It's not as far away as Adanda Karani or Janmashtam. So he goes there, and when Bart comes back, he also has these strong emotions, gets angry with his mother, gets back to the yoga I'm talking about. And then immediately he decides to go to convince Ram to come back. So then he goes to convince Ram to come back, and then he has these really intense emotional arguments with Ram. You come back, and I'll take your place. I will live like a hermit instead of you. And Ram just, of course, refuses because he knows the whole purpose of his exile is to actually kill the demons, the Rakshasas. Then, uh, then Bart, he resides in Nandigram outside of the Yoja, underground. You know, so much devotion, so much love. You know, that's actually, a, it's not just a love story between Sita and Ram. It's a love story between practically all the different personalities in different ways in the Ramayana. Ram so much he can't bear that Ram would be living a more austere life than him. So he sleeps under the ground because Ram is sleeping on the ground. So he actually digs a ditch and sleeps underground and that's his hair. And that's it. When they go to the forest, they take the tree sap and they put it, you can imagine you ladies, for me it wouldn't be a problem. Just <laughs> <laughs> take a bath and wash it out. But you take the tree sap and you take the, you know what tree sap is? Yeah. You. It's like when I was, oh my God, I shouldn't tell you this. When I was young, I would tease the girls by putting bubble gum in their hair. <laughs> 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 Anyone here ever do that? Me <laughs> 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 So, <laughs> yeah. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> 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 so, like, tree sap, the tree sap is like bubble gum on steroids. <laughs> so, they, but it says they rub it all over the hair, and the hair was just like matted. It must have been uncomfortable, too. Not just matted, it was uncomfortable. So, this way, so Bart does that out of love for Ralph. And he just like worships. Can you imagine how much love someone has for their brother? That he worships the shoes of Ram as a king. And they, that's the actual king, the shoes of Ram. And this is real love. This is real intense emotions. Isn't it? I mean, it's just it's beautiful. Yeah. People, I mean, normally you hear these stupid love stories like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet should have just texted each other instead of yelling from the balcony. <laughs> 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 the next Therefore, I fell Romeo. <laughs> so, um, I mean, this is all these love stories, and even Bollywood love stories, isn't it? <coughs> these love magazines. Mm -hmm. We have these movie magazines in India, right? So, so even in Fiji, mm -hmm. in the middle of the Fiji Times or Fiji Sun, you know, it's like five pages of the latest Bollywood package. So, uh, but it reminds a real love story. And so Bard is like that. Okay. And so then, I mean, fast forward. I'm not going to tell the whole of Ramayana tonight. So, so then, uh, Ram goes to the Dandakaranya forest. Actually, Dandakaranya literally means a place for austerities. Danda, not a stick. Dandakaranya. So Ram is in the Dandakaranya forest. And uh, another interesting thing is that 
right? Uh, of course, you all know the story about Serpanaka, and Serpanaka gets deformed by Lachman. Poor Serpanaka. And she has strong feelings, too. Of course, later on, she does, does get to have a relationship with Ram when she appears as Kupja, Krishna's pastimes. So she has all these strong emotions. Anyway. And then, or, or of course, talking about the emotion of fear, what happens is that when uh, Ravan eventually convinces Uncle Marichi to, uh, Marich, to actually uh, take the form of the golden deer, and Marich does that and lures uh, Ram away to try to capture the deer for Sita, and then Sita convinces Lakshman to go after Ram. One Marich yells out for help in the uh, voice of Ram. Then when that, that happens, and Ram, after he kills Marij, he sees Lachman, then Ram feels fear. And sees he's not there anymore. When he sees Lachman, he understands what has happened. So he's experiencing this extreme fear. And then he goes back, and he finds Sita gone, and he experiences extreme anger. And he's ready to destroy the whole universe. I mean, that's how much anger he and he's ready to take his bow out and create destruction for the whole universe. And Lakshman has to say, you know, cool it. You know? <laughs> so sometimes you find Ram getting real angry, and Lakshman having to cool him down. Sometimes you find Lakshman getting really angry, and Ram having to cool him down. Like Lakshman, he was ready at one point, previously in the story, to, to kill Bart. Because Bart had come, as we mentioned before, to bring Ram back to a yoga, but uh, Lakshman thought that Bart had come with the whole army to kill Ram. Mm. So he was ready, he said, with my arrow. Actually, in the remind he's called Sovitri. You know, that's the name of Lakshman. It means the son of Sovitri. Sovitri. Yes. Sovitri. And it's very interesting how the different words are used for different characters there. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, so, so Ram, so, anyway, so uh, Lakshman is ready to kill Bard and Ram has to cool him down. So, so back and forth, back and forth, every page basically is a strong emotion mm -hmm. in my mind. And in the, uh, the Christmas pastimes too, it's like that. You know, the demons come, everybody's in anxiety. Even sometimes Krishna gets in anxiety when his friends march into the mouth of the Yagasa and the yes. Gopis are in anxiety, feeling separation from Krishna. Love you so, then everyone's in anxiety when Krishna's dancing or Krishna's in the water trying to deal with the Kaliya Nag. So, continually intense, intense emotions. Yes. So, getting back to the present time of coronavirus. <laughs> so, you're all enjoying you know, talking about it. Uh, and I think if one is absorbed in Krishna Kata, then these things are not consequential. Hmm. It's described in the Bhagavatam that when you're doing Krishna Kata, Yamaraj comes so he can't kill anybody. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. So Yamaraj, Yamaraj even comes to hear the Krishna Kata, so he's pretty safe. So if one wants to be Avaya, Avaya Shapur Shal Shudhi, Yani Yogi Vavasta Dehi, Krishna Bhagavad Gita. If one wants to become free from fear, then one should just be always engaged in the Krishna Kata. Then there's no fear. Everything's positive. Just like recently, I've been studying something. Uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been studying uh, psychology, and it turns out that most of psychology is negative psychology. You know, uh, the, there's this DSM, some of you may know what that is, diagnostic method, that I can say, oh, you are borderline.
So the people tend to get really negative in this world. Mm. And, and then there's a new type of psychology called positive psychology. I'm not going to get into it because I'm, I'm doing a whole presentation on it. Now. I'm going to do research on it. Uh, but so, that, so the whole idea is if we're positive about Krishna consciousness, then Vishwam uh, Purna Shukayate. Have you heard of that expression before? Vishwam Purna Shukayate. Then the whole world is blissful. Everything is blissful because why? Krishna's in charge. Yomam Pashati Sarvatra. Sarvam Chumayi Pashati. Dashaham na panashami, tatame na panashati. Krishna says in the Gita, the sixth chapter, one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me is never lost to me, nor am I ever lost to him. Another point of positivity, actually, this is the first point of positive psychology, having a positive outlook. Uh, the second point, another point, is Sarvashya Chaham Radhi Sanavishta. That Krishna's in your heart, Swara Sarvabhutanam, Videsha Arjuna Tishtati. Your best friend is always with you. That's pretty cool. If you think about it, then everything, I mean, even the fears and the this and that, it's just, you're always positive about life. And if you're positive about life, you're going to be happy with this hell here. <coughs> and be able to bring people to Krishna consciousness. So that's that's really that's really the point. The whole thing is to <coughs> see Krishna everywhere, see everything in Krishna, see that Krishna is controlling everything. Vishwara Padma Krishna. Satchavanandarina Nahira Adiya. Krishna's the cause. Krishna's the uh, spiritual cause, material cause. Of everything. And then when you see like that, then Vishwam Purna Shukayate. Everything is blissful. And then, even if there is some anxiety, it's just part of the game. So, anyway, that's what I want to speak about tonight. The mind is wonderful. About making the mind. I know many of you have not read about making the mind, you've read the Tobit about your mind. Uh, which it's all right, but the Valmiki Ramayana is really full of rust. Uh, Tulsi Das Ramayana has some rust too, but the uh, Valmiki Ramayana is just it's so exciting. And the descriptions, <coughs> even of Ravana, even of Marich, Marich is just like a wonderful, let me just tell the story. Marich, Marich of course, is Ravana's uncle. And Marija lost his mother early in the game. His mother was Tadaka. You all know Tadaka? Yes. She was the first demon killed by Ram. She was hideous. Oh. And uh, and uh, this Marija and Sabahu, <coughs> one of his friends, they were actually defiling the uh, fire side advice of Vishwamrita Muni. They were the ones who were throwing cuss and everything on it. And then what happened is that Ram, when he was only 16 years old, he killed Savahu and he fired an arrow at, Mar arrow at Marich and sent him 800 miles away, 100 yogis, into the ocean. <laughs> Very interesting thing. And so Marich, he was was a little had a little PTSD at that point. <laughs> you know, post traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> so but he wasn't completely psychologically disturbed. Then then after that, this is another just story of strong emotions. <clears throat> he decided to really get even with Rob. So he transformed his form into an eight legged beast who ate men. And he, along with these other Sarva, <coughs> Sarva Bodo, I forget how you pronounce it, these other eight-legged beasts were going to attack Ram in the forest. And Ram fired an arrow and ran far away. 
got away from Ram's arrow, and Ram killed the other eight legged beast. And what happened is at that point he decided to take sannyas. <laughs> he just like stayed in the forest chanting, God knows what he was chanting. But anyway, so he just stayed in the forest chanting. And he was fearful all the time. He really was suffering from post traumatic stress disorder. He was thinking, he, in the Valmaker Ramayana, he says that even when he heard uh, a word beginning with R A, he felt fear. So it mentioned specifically, even when he heard the name for Jewel, Ratna. He was just like, oh, Ratna. <laughs> you know, like it. So, so these intense feelings he had. But this is actually an indirect rust he had in relationship with Ram. He was thinking of Ram all the time. So later on, when Robin came and convinced Maharaj, actually, Robin came twice to see Maharaj. The first time, Maharaj was able to convince Robin not to kidnap Sita Devi. He said to Robin, who, else, who has given you this bad, this bad advice? And Robin sort of agreed with him at that point, went back to his kingdom. But then Surbanaka convinced Robin, you have to kidnap Sita. She liked him. She said, I actually, I went uh, to kidnap Sita for you, Robin. She lied. And uh, Robin convinced Marie, and Marie said, We're, I'm going to die. And Robin said, well, you got a choice. Either you do this for me and die at my hands right now, or you go and do this activity and appear like a golden deer. And Prabhupada said that uh, Rich decided better to be killed by Ram than Ram. Okay. So anyway, so the point I'm making is that all these Krishna Gita stories, Ram Gita stories, uh, even Raha stories, they're all filled with like suspense, emotions, intense things, and we just forget about the stuff in this world. I think we're all about. Don't you hear about this? Thing? Don't care. And then Prabhupada says, when you're meant to die, you die. I mean, Prabhupada was talking to the devotees one time about World War III. That was one of the favorite topics that the devotees always talked about. Prabhupada said, they said, Prabhupada, when the bombs fall, we won't have anything to eat. And Robert said, then we'll die. In a very nonchalant fashion. <laughs> Not like, you know, if I told all of you, you're all gonna die tomorrow. <laughs> you beg me, no, no, no. That's what you do, put a gun to your head. America, you know, put a gun to your head. <laughs> But Prabhupada said, no. Prabhupada said, only a fool could claim it when death comes. Because he managed. I like what Pariksit Maharaj. Pariksit Maharaj was given only seven days. He just took shelter of Krishna. Uh, there was that Maharaj Katvanga. You know the story, Maharaj Katvanga? Maharaj Katvanga was fighting for the demigods. And they said, you can have anything you want. If they said that to me, I'd say, test me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't fought with the Debbie guys, so. <laughs> they said, you have anything you want. And he said, I just want to know when I'm going to die. And they said, well, in a few seconds, check your watch. And he came down to the Sarah Planet, took shelter of Krishna, and went back to go. So, Avaya Shakra Sham Shudhi Ram Lola Vastati. Okay, any questions? Comments? Yes. Thank you very much. It was a really lovely class. Um, so, what's the relation between Marit and um, Kal Nemi? Kal Nemi is, uh, I think they're both uncles of uh, yeah, Rama. It's not mentioned in the Ramayana what their relationship is, but he called them both uncles. Now, whether they were village uncles, you know, the village of Lanka, <laughs> or whatever. But 
you know, they were elders. They were elders. And uh, Bridge was such an interesting character because of his always thinking of Ram and even hearing the syllables of R A, you know, the syllable R A, Ra. Mm -hmm. You know, can you imagine that? <laughs> and this is right, he would see behind every tree, he would look, he would see Ram. That's another description of the Brahmin in the mind. He'd look at every tree and he'd be Ram. He'd hear a sound on this Ram. The perfect description of post traumatic stress disorder. More so than comes out with Krishna? Yeah, uh, I think both. But uh, Kamsa had not, well, he had lost a lot of his, you have to go? Thank you, we'll see you next time. So uh, Kamsa had lost all of his friends and his demons. But he hadn't really directly accosted, or Krishna hadn't directly accosted him at that point. Kamsa was still thinking he was going to be successful up until the end. He thought uh, Chanura and Mushtaka, you know, the two wrestlers, they were going to be able to kill Krishna. Uh, he had some, or the Kuvali of Pita, you know, on the elephants. He thought that was going to be able to kill Krishna. He had so many plans. He, he, he really hadn't given up hope. Whereas Muriej has had given up hope. I mean, he, he was hopeless. I mean, completely a psychological mess. Much more than Kamsa was. But he could What's function that? enough to, to, you know, take the form of a deer and properly yeah. find that path. I mean, under duress, because he was threatened by, uh, he was threatened by Robin. You know, basically, Robin had a gun in his head. On his Even head. Though it's, it's, he said, I'm going to kill you right now. His uncle, but he had a gun for his head. Yeah. Not literally. They didn't use guns at that time. But they had other better mechanisms than guns. <laughs> hey, Ravana. Oh, What's this guy? Uh, one thing I just read there was so interesting that when Jataya was attacking Ravan, and this had nothing to do with the question, Jataya was attacking Ravan, uh, and he cut off hmm, 10 of the arms of Ravan. Oh, ten. Ten, well, Robin had 20 arms. Oh, 20. That's yeah, because you, oh, you have 10 heads, you get two arms for each head. <laughs> you got to do mathematics. <laughs> you had 20 arms, so to tell you, cut off 10 of the arms. And it's described that they grew back like snakes. Oh my God. Isn't it? I mean, just like reading about the battle. Like that, it was just, they just sprouted out from the stumps. <laughs> oh. Robin had, his heads were like that too. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, such, such interesting characters. And J yeah, Jataya was extremely angry, you know, he was, finally, of course, he had his wings cut off. And Ravana, uh, Ravana actually flew back with Sita on his own power without the chariot. Because when Ravana came to uh, kidnap Sita Devi, he brought a chariot. It wasn't the Pushpaka. It was a chariot uh, with uh, mules with human heads. You know what a mule is? Donkey. Mm -hmm. Like a donkey with a human head on it. <laughs> I mean, just like just the images of these things. And it was Jataya who actually killed and cut off the heads of all these donkeys with human heads on them. And he destroyed Ravana's chariot. So Ravana actually carried Sita Devi back like this, through the air on his own power. So that, don't believe the movie. <laughs> so that Ramayana, anyway. So anyway, getting back to the story of Marie. So, so Marij, yeah, basically that was to help him become Krishna conscious. Hakama, Sarvakama, Moksha Kama, Dharadi, Chaitanya Bhakti. Well, somehow or other, one has to think of Krishna. Even if it's out of fear or anger or greed.
greed. Like it's described, <coughs> like getting back to uh, Kubja, <coughs> she was thinking of Krishna out of lust. Her relationship, which she was previously in Sudhanaka, but previously she just had pure, pure lust. But as Kubja, she was, it was a mixed thing. It was lust, not pure devotional service, but that became purified. <coughs> by thinking of the Lord intensely. So, so the main thing is we're meant to develop intense emotions in relationship to Krishna, Ram, and Krishna's pure devotees. And those intense emotions, uh, volume, intense hankering, will actually help us cross over the ocean of material existence. And this is a lesson I'm learning from reading the mind. <coughs> But instead, we have all these intense emotions about coronavirus, or we even at one temple send out a notice uh, that we're not going to have Gopanim in the temple. Everybody attend Gopanim by internet. Can you imagine? You know, just have a Pujar, everybody on the internet. Where's that in Malay? Um, <coughs> yeah. You tell me, tell intense love with Krishna Ram. Yeah. But actually, Krishna is a detest. How can you love intense love with detest person? Krishna, well, that's interesting you, you say Krishna. Of course, Krishna is the original Atma Ram, he's self satisfied. That's what you're referring to. But Krishna is not detached from love of his devotees. Krishna is uh, Swarat, he's independent, he's out to come, he gets whatever he wants, he doesn't need anything. At the same time, his love for us is pure because he doesn't need anything from us. You, your love is not, someone's love is not pure when you need someone to fulfill some of your needs or desires. Let's say, if I become, like a salesman. I mean, how many salesmen have we met? Maybe you haven't. <laughs> but how many salesmen have, have I met that really show a lot of devotion for me? <laughs> I went into a car dealership a few years ago. And the car I've been a dealer for a long time. But I went in uh, the car dealership at, at about 10 years before I had been to the same dealer. And he remembered me. He said, oh, Mr. Swami. <laughs> <laughs> How's the Swami family? It's so good to see you again. <laughs> like Robert said, too much devotion is a sign of a thief. <coughs> so his love for me was not unalloyed. <laughs> it was loyal, not unalloyed. <laughs> it was such a word. Oh, yeah, alloyed. Yeah, alloyed. Is alloy. Not even alloy. Alloy means a mixture. Oh. <laughs> it was just pure exploitation. <laughs> you know, if it was alloy, it wouldn't be proper because that would be there would be actually some love there. But someone really loves you when they care for you and they're not getting anything from it. That's my definition of love. And of course, that's the love that gopis felt for Krishna. The gopis said. Radharani says that if my unhappiness gives Krishna happiness, then my unhappiness or my misery is my happiness. You know, it appears to be like a contradiction. So in other words, that's pure. You know, you don't get anything. You just want Krishna to be happy. You're just concerned with Krishna going out to the fields barefoot and he's hurting his feet. I mean, the closest thing to that is a mother's love in this world. The mother will always love the child. You know, like, you know, I call my mother and she just, even though she's 92, she doesn't remember anything else but me. That's pretty good. That's my devotee. <laughs> doesn't remember where she is. Basically, doesn't remember if she was ever married. She had, how did how did she get laid? But anyway, <laughs> at that time, I was not a list of afraid of going on. So that's something new, modern world. 
So. <laughs> but she with, with me. It's just, oh. She remembers my phone number. She can't remember. She doesn't even know where she lives. I call her up and she says, they just moved my apartment to Florida. But she's in New York. Oh. <laughs> but she remembers me. So that's love. So anyway, so. <laughs> so. So, so here's Krishna. All right, going back to the question. Yes, Krishna is detached. He's out to, uh, he's out around and out to come and Swarat and all those other nice things. But he really loves us for no reason whatsoever other than we're us. You know, we're parts and parcels. I mean, just like you could say, you know, we love your hands. It's a the relationship is a little bit similar with Krishna. That. Obviously, it's part of the body. So we're actually connected intimately with Krishna, of course, with each other, too. Not like the hippies said, you know, we're all one. But we're all connected. Krishna is the central point, and we're all connected with each other. And of course, one who loves Krishna, Rasti Saravani Bhutani Atmana Ivana Pashat, and so the Patriot Chakman, I think, or maybe Vidya Bhutani, one who loves Krishna doesn't hate anyone, loves everybody. So, uh, so, so, Krishna loves all of us so much that he's making plans how to bring us back. This is brought out in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita by Sanatana Goswami, where he says to Gopal Kumar that I was just wondering, when are you coming back? And he said, I was wondering so much that I became your guru. He became Gopal Kumar's guru. And then when he finally comes back to the spiritual world, Gopal Kumar, uh, Krishna faints out of ecstasy, embracing him. And all the coward boys think that Gopal Kumar is a demon because Krishna's become unconscious. <laughs> they think that, you know, who is this demon who's actually uh, devastated Krishna? But in actuality, Krishna's just so happy, waiting for the easy time. And you know, this is shown in the in the uh, Brihad Bhagavatam, it says when this is when when is he coming back? So Krishna's thinking about that with every one of us. When is he when is that rascal coming back to him? And he's making plans, and that's why he sent Prabhupada. And he sends other people, not in Christianity, in Jesus Christ, you know, Krishna sent in every religion, uh, even in the uh, Malachi Shastras, it says that in sundries, places, and circumstances, he appears, he sends people. In fact, he even says that in the Bible. So, that's love. Yes, he doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's hard for us to understand why someone would love someone else if they didn't need anything. It's really hard. Because, I mean, generally, you know, people do things because they at least some mixed motives. Oh. You know, so, I mean, because of the sannyasi. But let's say, let's say someone gets married. It's not always because of pure, ma pure love. <laughs> like in the, isn't it so popular? <laughs> it's because it, people are thinking, you know, I have this need. And this person will help me fulfill this need for companionship, this need for whatever. Right? I mean, it's not, I'm not denigrating people who are married. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but I'm mean, saying, you have, you have to understand it's not pure. As much as you make things, you can go on the internet, in the Facebook, and, Show the picture of you and your beloved. <laughs> <laughs> or, you, or you in front of the deities. And it's interesting, people go in front of the deities and they do selfies in front of the deities. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, in front of Krishna, actually, in, in our Vrindavan temple, it says no selfies. <laughs> Because people always want to have this picture of themselves. Here's me. 
Mm. If you look at anyone's like vacation album, mm. it's like, here's me <laughs> in front of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> if, here's me at the Harbor Bridge. Mm. Me, me, me and my sweetie at the Harbor Bridge. <laughs> 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 so, so anyway, I mean, it, the relationships in this world are not pure unless they're centered on Krishna, of course. There is some nature. We understand that. I'm not criticizing anyone for that, you know. It's just like life. And you have to work a job, too. <coughs> when you work a job, right? Why? Because you want some money. And if there wasn't any money, would... Those of you who have jobs, work your jobs. My question. Mm, no. No. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, if the person said, you've got to work for love. <laughs> come, come and work for love. Uh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so, and even in the beginning of devotional service, it's motivated too. You know, chatur vidha, Bajantima. Bajantima. You know, people come to Krishna because they want wealth. People come because they, they're inquisitive. People come because they want knowledge. People come because they're in distress. I mean, everybody wants that. So, but the, in the end, you don't want anything from Krishna. You can crush me by your embrace. You can leave me broken hearted and not be present before me. You're completely free to do anything and everything and you remain my worshipful Lord unconditionally. This is pure love. And then Krishna has this pure love for us. I mean, if we really understood that. Anyway, if we really understood that, we'd be just overwhelmed with gratitude. So Krishna does love us, even though he doesn't need anything. Because that's a, generally love in, love in this world means we need something. You know, everything fulfills, not everything we need, but most things fulfill certain needs or desires that I have. You know, like, oh, I love your mobile phone. So, any other questions? Or comments? Yeah, Buddha, oh, yeah. yes. The um, uh, Ramana in that um, Krishna Dharma come out in his version, is that based on the Valmiki? Yeah, and it's summarized. It doesn't have all the details in it. <laughs> the Valmiki Ramayana is the world's largest epic poem. So where do you get a copy of that? Has ISKCON done that? Or? Uh, no, ISKCON hasn't done that. The uh, Gita Press has actually published a very nice version that's in uh, Old English. Old English. It's an old, like, almost like Shakespeare in English. Which is really nice. You studied Shakespeare. Which, which and Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Shakespeare was very interesting. Prabhupada would often quote Shakespeare. Uh, Life is but a poor player that struts and frets his time upon the stage and then it's better to see no more of Shakespeare. So, uh, anyway, so that's where, that's the Ramayana. And I, I'm sure that there's, there's some good versions of the Ramayana on uh, the internet. You can find too. Modern, more modern translations of the Ramayana. And it's, it's actually one of my favorites in the literature. So reading those stories you mentioned before, it brings out the emotions. Yeah. So that's obviously important. So not just reading philosophy, but the stories yeah. are going to bring out that emotion. Mm -hmm. 
So whether it's uh, Ramayana or you know Krishna book or something like that. Right. Now you notice the way Prabhupada arranged Krishna book is he interspersed the philosophy with stories. But that's the tenth canto. Yeah. Actually, the whole Bhagavatam is like that. That you have some story and then there's prayers. Mm. Another story and more prayers. Mm. More philosophy. Like we were just reading, and in, in the United States, we are we are covering the chapter of Dunas stealing the uh, coward boys and the calves. And then after that, when Brahma is apologizing, there's so many beautiful prayers that he's offering. And one of the final prayers, I believe it's chapter 14, uh, one of the final prayers is that uh, when one performs devotional service or meditates on Krishna, the whole material ocean becomes shrunk to the size of a calf's hoofprint. And then it's described by the Acharyas that what that means is that one is able to cross over the ocean without even noticing that they've crossed over the ocean. Oh. That's amazing. I was stuck on that as well. <laughs> yeah. that, it, that you just, you're so much immersed in Krishna consciousness you forget that you crossed over the ocean. <laughs> that's real Christian consciousness. Rasa Vartam, Rasa Prasad, Rasa Prasad, Dorka Tate, you know, higher taste, higher pleasure. So, yeah, this Christian Gita, we're so fortunate to have Christian Gita. And if we repose our emotions in that, then these other things in this world, yeah, coronavirus. I mean, take precautions, yeah. You know, if someone's coughing, you just stay away. <coughs> but don't run if you see a Chinese person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Across the street. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, just have to, you know, life is like that. It's dangerous. But I'm, but I, that's another verse from that same thing. But I'm, but I'm, God, be, but I'm going to take shots. There's danger at every step. step. That's actually the same verse. There's danger at every step in this material world. When you drive into the car, as, as Prabhupada said, he reversed the words. He said, net, net break, uh, break speed. Break net yeah. speed. You just break net, and Prabhupada reversed it, net break. So you drive into a car. You know how dangerous that is? <laughs> <laughs> How many people got hurt on the way to Mayapur? Hmm. We are, we're going to Mayapur this year in the car. And it, right before we went to Mayapur, we got a notice from some of the... Uh, some of the... Actually, it was Dr. Chumar. He gave us a notice. We've arranged a helicopter ride for all of you. So everyone was going, die, John, John. Now we're safe. And then right before that, this famous person had a helicopter. It's actually funny. Right before we went to my mm-hmm. we had this beautiful helicopter, army helicopter. You know, very good helicopter we had. And this person in this India, I'm not getting in a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe they have goats propelling it or something. <laughs> <laughs> This is about with pedals. A rickshaw. So, right before, you know, the devotees were supposed to go in a helicopter to buy for it, then this accident happened. Anyway. And everyone said, uh, let's forget about that. <laughs> everyone got fearful mm-hmm. at that point. So, padam padam yadi padam yadi There's danger at every step. And you take you take some precautions, but you just go on with life. You know, obviously, you know, everybody here had, you know, coronavirus. You know, I'd be real careful. You have it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be real careful. But you just can't get, you know, paranoid and 
fearful all the time about life, you know. Whatever, you know, we go to Fiji and we talk about dengue fever. And I, I don't want to go outside because there's mosquitoes outside. You know, so you can be fearful all the time. But ultimately, it'll get you. You're fighting the woods and cattle. Because Krishna is there. Mm-hmm. You know, Prabhupada said, actually, the Vedic literature said, he said, when Krishna wants to protect you, uh, then you can, you'll, you'll be protected. Now, if Krishna wants to kill you, you're going to have the best doctors in the world, and nothing. Mm-hmm. You'll die. <coughs> so, it's up to Krishna. That's the whole point, is just like, take shelter of Krishna, use your intelligence to protect yourself. Don't do anything foolish. Don't go bungee jumping. Sorry about that. You know, if you go bungee jumping, if something happens, don't blame a person. (laughs) Bungee jumping means when you jump off of a big building or a bridge with a rubber band tied to your feet. Yeah, big, 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 big rubber band attached to you. And so, you know, why take unnecessary risks? That's the risk. I'm selling with you, Ted. What would you do? I'm selling so far. Yeah, so basically, like, you you wear a harness and you're basically going down rocks or a cliff edge. Oh. Yeah, we've got a rock and cliff edge. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? <coughs> no? So, what's that? Uh, just had a question about, you know how you were saying that um, with Ramayana, there's all these intense emotions yeah. from all the various people in it. I, right from the beginning, whenever I heard about Ram, Ramayana, I feel like I never looked at it in the correct way because whenever I heard about these things, like let's say for example, Ra- Lord Ram was asked to go to the forest. Yeah. My first thought would always be, he's God, like nothing can happen to him anyway. So is it really that intense for him? Because he, like he's invincible. So what can happen to him anyway? So what is the correct way to look at that? Well, the correct way is he's forgetting he's God. Because if you just think, you know, I'm God, nothing can happen to me, I'm invulnerable. You know, this is all just like a show. Then what's the fun? Yeah. Right? Mm. I mean, just like when li- when I was young, we would play cops and robbers. Mm. Did we do that? Cops and robbers. And we actually had guns. I mean, mm. not really. Mm. You know, uh, like cap- caps, you know. Right. Yeah. Caps. I don't think they allow them anymore because. Oh, they still do. Oh, they do. Well, I know in, in America, if you have one, the first thing you think you have a real gun, they'll shoot you. So you can't. They don't sell them anymore. So, so we used to play. I mean, I knew that I was just a little kid, and it was just a show. But I got so much into it that I was just like having fun. You know, you're yeah. <laughs> So Krishna, he gets into it, that's yoga maya. Yoga maya is Krishna's internal potency that makes him and his others forget about who he is so we can get into these pastimes and enjoy life. What's the enjoyment about remembering your God all the time? It's a pretty boring life, isn't it? Especially if everyone's making requests from you all the time. There was a 